me and my friends were camping for the weekend, and we were really excited, as we had planned it for weeks. There were four of us, two boys and two girls, two couples. We were deep in the woods when we decided to set up our tent. Each couple had their own tent. It was a moonlit night, so the brightness that was there was coming through the trees, even though it was still very dark as the trees blocked out most of the moonlight, which added to the creepiness of the whole atmosphere deep in the woods. We lit a fire in the middle of the space we set up, the tent. It was hard work gathering the wood, harder than I expected. I never expected it to be so hard building a fire in the woods. In the movies it's almost like the fire is already there. After the fire was lit, we started drinking some beer and told ghost stories. Suddenly, when it was my time to tell my story, I heard some noise over by the trees. I feared it was a bear or even some crazy stalker. My friend walked over to investigate and he suddenly jumped and screamed, <laughs> then started laughing and said, oh my god guys, you're so over dramatic. Then suddenly something caught his eye. He was bending down to look at something in the grass and picked it up. He seemed to be holding a piece of wood and whatever was on it was making him act very strange. We all asked him, what was it? When he walked over, he showed us and said, that's weird, right? It was a piece of wood with find me written in red. I felt fear overcome me, wondering, could it even be blood? My friend said, what the hell is this about? I said, it looks pretty weird, I mean, find who? <laughs> My other friend was laughing, saying, maybe it's the boogie man, woo! His girlfriend started laughing, until there was another noise from over the other side of the clearing. My friend walked over, and yet again saw another piece of wood with writing on it. He brought it over to show us, I'm down this direction, keep going. We all said together, no way are we going down there. I didn't feel comfortable going to sleep, but it was too late to trek back out of the woods at this time of night, so we just decided to call it a night and be happy to get out of here in the morning. When we were just about to rest our heads and get some sleep, I noticed there was a shadow of a hand outside my tent. I froze in fear, anticipating what it could be outside, and told my boyfriend. He reluctantly opened the zip of the tent, and there outside of the tent was a little boy drenched from head to toe in water. He was about 10 years old, and he was crying, saying, why, why didn't anyone find me? Suddenly, he seemed to disappear into thin air. We had the pieces of wood with the writing gathered outside, so we decided to keep them to tell the police the next day. When we did, the sheriff looked at us, strange. Ye damn kids, playing these sick games, why can't ye let that poor boy rest? That night, we learned that ten years ago, on that very night, in the direction the piece of wood was telling us to go, a ten year old boy drowned while running from his parents to hide while they were playing hide and seek.
My name is Simon. It was a Friday night and I was really looking forward to tonight's game. I'm a quarterback in my local high school football team and my girlfriend is on the cheer team. There was a lot of stress this week between my girlfriend and another member of the team, Sarah, but thankfully all their trouble has been sorted out. My girlfriend Louise can be very high strung at times. I hadn't seen my girlfriend since yesterday. I got into a huge fight with a guy and when it was over I just saw my girlfriend cry and run away. There must be something wrong with her phone because when I tried to call all I got was static. I was cheating on my girlfriend with Sarah. But my girlfriend never approached me about it so I wasn't certain that's why they were fighting. And I know my girlfriend and she would definitely approach me. It was time to kick off and I was hyped up. We were playing a rival school, Moontown High School. Our team, Lime Street High School, were on top of their game this season, thankfully. But tonight's game was very important. The game started off very rough indeed. There were guys kept running for me and it was like they were targeting me. To make matters worse, I had butterfingers cause the ball just fell out of my hands once I caught it. These guys seemed to really have it in for me. I was exhausted at half time and when I walked into the dressing room, everyone ignored me. I didn't know what was happening. Suddenly I went out on the field and waved at my girlfriend and she was ignoring me also and just started cheering with the rest of her team. It was after the game I felt like I was having a nightmare when my teacher got up to speak to everyone. Okay everyone, it was a decision made by the school council that we play this game in memory of Simon and even though we were on the edge of calling it off, we decided to play the game in Simon's memory. He was such a great student and great player. I tuned the sound of my teacher out as now I remembered getting hit by a yellow school bus running across the road to my girlfriend so excited to see she was talking to Louise. I tried for weeks to get them to be friends again and when I finally did I got hit by a school bus. But it was then I remembered a few weeks ago we were messing with a new kid in school who was into witchcraft and said if we wanted something to happen we needed to sacrifice something we love. I then realized I made a pact with a new student to my girlfriend and Sarah be friends again. Then I walked up to my girlfriend and Sarah speaking. I couldn't believe what I heard my girlfriend say. I swear I was so angry at him cheating with you I didn't even realize I was going to push him in front of a bus. I didn't even see it coming. What if there was CCTV? I was wondering why I didn't remember her pushing me. Then the student from my school walked up to me and said, Don't worry, this was all mapped out for you. Don't you see? I died too, but came back to life. I was shocked wondering what he meant. Then suddenly I could hear voices and see lights. When my vision came around I noticed there were doctors standing over me. He said, Welcome back kid, you're a fighter. My girlfriend came in a couple of minutes later with Sarah. My girlfriend started crying and took my hand. She whispered, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I replied, it's okay. I told my girlfriend a few weeks later when I recovered about my memories of playing the game. She said there was no game, it was called off. The strange guy from school kept telling me that he was messing about coming back to life. But after researching him online, I learned that he was brought back to life after being clinically dead after drowning. He was hailed as a miracle boy. The drowning happened a year ago. When I approached him about it, he told me it would be better to forget the whole thing because when he decided to tell people about the sacrifice etc, they just thought he was crazy. The boy looked confused. Then I got a phone call from my mum telling me that my girlfriend 
was hit by a truck. I had then realised why the boy looked confused. Then he looked shocked. He said, More than likely she hadn't known what the sacrifice would be. I got angry with the boy and shouted, What do you mean? Then my girlfriend walked up to me. She hadn't realised she had been killed. The boy said, You can see dead people. That's the thing about this. My girlfriend smiled and said, What's wrong? I had then realised. The reason I came back to life was because my girlfriend wished for me to get better, not knowing that she would sacrifice herself. An ordinary day with my friends hanging out, riding bikes around the block and far away from home. Something caught our attention. An abandoned house. Completely abandoned and damaged. What caught my attention was the really bad smell that the house has. I planned with my friends to visit the house at midnight to finally find out what's the bad smell. It was finally midnight. I had already packed my supplies needed for this mission. I had a notebook so I can write notes based on what we see. When we arrived to the house, the house had the door open. I thought it was weird considering the fact that it was shut when we were riding the bikes around the house. Once we entered, the smell got worse. It came from the kitchen. I had a pocket knife for self-protection. We went to the kitchen and our eyes opened wide when we realized there was a cannibalistic restaurant. I hid in the closet with my friends. I started to write notes about it. Once the people in that restaurant were gone, we took off. We called the police once we got home. They arrived a little bit late, yet they found a dead body outside our house, with a note that said, and a picture of us taking off. 